Okay, so in this tutorial we're just going to run through some of the uh, um, CFD modeling features of the BlendMe bl um, architectural modeling plugin for Blender. I'm going to open up a previous uh, case that we were working on from the last tutorial, which was the um, sun path. We don't need the sun on the camera anymore, so I'll delete those. I'm going to try and run through a complete CFD model here in 10 minutes, so I'm going to be very quick. Uh, first things first, we might um, just change the uh, color of those windows just to make them a little bit more visible and get the uh, transparency up. Uh, now what we're going to do is have flow coming in from the south and um, going in through one window and one opening in a window and out through another. So what I might do is um, parent that, that part and that'll be our outlet. I'll parent that. What I'll do is I'll move that to the uh, second layer and I'll move that down to another layer. So there we go, we have an inlet and an outlet. Now it's a bit easier to model when you're in orthographic mode, so I'll move from orthographic from the top. And what I might just do is add a cube. Um, now this would be nice because what we're going to do is add some uh, diffusers to the, uh, to the, to the floor. To the, to the ceiling and some uh, heat sources to the floor. I'll actually add a very extreme heat source. Um, it'll be a uh, two kilowatt source just so we get some extreme buoyancy effects and, uh, and whatnot going on now. I still haven't started up my plugin just yet, which we should probably be doing. Uh, so I'll start up the plugin and that allows me to set uh, various boundary conditions um, for the uh, for the model as, as I go. So for different objects that I've got selected, I can apply different boundary conditions. And there's that. Now this is going to be our hot patch. It's quite large, uh, 1.5 meters uh, in dimension. And I might just, uh, it's going to be a hot patch, so I might uh, give it a new material and uh, we'll call that hot patch. And it'll be red. There we go. I'll also just call the object hot patch, and that's it there. Uh, now I'm going to just um, s turn on snap and move that on the floor. Um, and what I might just do is um, grab it. I might go in inside of the object there and just get it down. on the floor. And I'll move it over into that corner over there. I might just rotate it in the Z direction. So it's roughly rotated with the same orientation as the as the building. And I'll uh, snap it to the nearest face and just grab it and move it over there. Turn the snap on. Better. Okay, so that's our hot patch applied to the floor. Um, now what I might do is just um, the top and actually put some diffusers on the ceiling. Um, so rotate that, and the diffuser will be quite a bit smaller. That'll be uh, 0.5 meters in either direction a bit thinner. They're going to be um, cold now, so I'll actually make a new surface called cold patch, a new colour. Um, I'll colour it blue. That'll be a nice cold patch. Um, I'll just grab it and move it over there for now. And I might just make three of them, three diffusers coming down randomly. Okay. Now I'll join those three diffusers together because they're all going to have the same sort of boundary condition applied to them. And I'll call them a cold patch. Uh, now if we go to the CFD option, um, these are going to have a fixed velocity. Actually in the scene I'm going to set the solver. By default it's not a buoyant solver but I'm going to turn on buoyant simple foam which makes it a buoyant solver. And I'm going to set these at a fixed temperature of 290 say. I'm setting these values to quite stream, extreme values just so that uh, we get some dynamic occurring. Now I don't need the top side of these uh, diffusers, so 
I'm just going to get rid of them, delete just those faces. And what I might just do is uh, grab it in the Z direction and move it down into the space. If I now go in and actually have a look in there, there's our sur surfaces. And what I might just do is grab, turn on snap and snap them up onto the roof. There we go. So similarly, um, our hot patch down here, we should be applying boundary conditions for it, and we'll actually apply just a fixed wattage to that. And like I said, I want to get some pretty extreme buoyancy going on, so we'll set that to 2 kilowatts. Um, and it'll just remain as a hot wall, essentially. Um, selecting all the surfaces, um, I might make them a mesh level of 3, that, that'll make sense later. Um, but the walls, I'll make just a mesh level of 2. Okay, so our model's set up now, ready for CFD basically. And what I might just do is add now a domain in which we're going to do the CFD. Scale it out, just so you can see it. It's a box like that. And I'm going to make it 14 by 18 in the Y by 6 tall. It's a very small domain. This is not appropriate, obviously, for scientific uh, modeling, so no need to comment on any of that stuff. Um, I'm just going through very quickly demonstrating the actual um, how to do a CFD model. Uh, now we want to have some wind coming in to blow the uh, through the windows, so we go to the minimum Y coordinate and we'll set a fixed velocity of um, let's say one meter per second coming in. Now that air needs to all go everywhere. All the air that we bring into the space needs to go somewhere, so we'll set it out through a fixed pressure outlet. The air coming in is um, just going to be coming in isothermally at 300 um, Kelvin. 300 Kelvin. Okay. So now I'll select all of my objects and it's time to actually do the CFD model. Um, so I'll remove anything that's existing, write system files, write all the mesh files, and then we'll do some actual creating of the block mesh. And if you look at the terminal, you'll see what it's doing here. If I now start creating this snapped hex mesh, you can see that it's going through meshing the domain. And that didn't take too long. The reason why that didn't take too long is because my block mesh is 0.5, it was one meter, so it's quite coarse, but if I make it smaller and go through that process again, you should see it takes a little bit longer to actually create the mesh. So while that's meshing, uh, we can start to set up the um, start time and end times of the simulation. We'll get it to write out every 10 iterations and keep the last two. So it'll only keep the last two of every writes that it does. Um, so we're nearly done with the meshing and there it goes, it's done. It's quite a small mesh, we've only got uh, 200,000, um, what do we got, uh, 60,000 cells. So we write that and we get it running. And here, there go our iterations. So while we're waiting for that to, to cook, um, just describe a little bit more about the uh, CFD modeling. We want to get up to about 60 iterations before we get anything that's worthwhile looking at. Um, if we look at 10 or so iterations now, there'll be something there to look at, but it won't be uh, very interesting. It'll just um, not have much buoyancy going on. It's still trying to um, solve um, for, for all the uh, buoyant effects. So if we look a bit more in detail at the, um, the CFD capabilities, there's a variety of different um, solvers that you can pick from. Um, porous um, solvers, uh, simple and compressible with porosity, um, aging scalars for doing age of air calculations, 
um, buoyant solvers which we're using at the moment, um, transient solvers, these are all steady state solvers uh, which are mostly used in the building industry, there's um, scalar transports for pollution dispersion, uh, incompressible solvers and um, potential flow solvers, and potential flow is mostly used for initialising the domain or for getting a very rough idea of um, pressures on um, the uh, upstream uh, facades of, of buildings. Um, I think all the other controls here are quite self-explanatory. Um, the meshing, all the uh, parallel meshing and reconstructing will go in through in another tutorial, but the beauty of this uh, CFD solver through OpenFoam is that it, it's we're leveraging the power of open source in that we, it's not really optimal to be running on single CPU. On, on my little laptop here, um, I'm, I'm doing it for this small demo, but generally this would be run across a, an array of um, a cluster of, of, of computers. Um, so we're up to iteration uh, 50 now. Maybe we'll have something interesting to look at, so let's, uh, let's open that up. We open up um, the post processor. bring in all of our variables and mesh. You can see my CPU is going at 100% on both processors. It's a dual core machine, uh, very old laptop again, but one core is being used up on just screen recording uh, completely. So one thing that's nice to do is to bring in the actual STL geometry that was used to create the, uh, the mesh and you can set the opacity to 0.3 so we can actually visualize it um, we might turn that off, so there we go and we can add some streamlines for example into the domain, if I seed them from this point here um, and then apply we should be able to see some nice uh, buoyant effects going on here. They become a bit more obvious if we colour it. Um, and we'll rescale the range to 302 Kelvin, 299. It's not going to be a very big because we're still very early on. And there you can start to see the plume, the hot plume, plume in the corner. Now that's going to spread as we do more iterations, more calculations, but you can see the air coming from upstream through the window, the dynamics going on inside of the space and leaving the window on the other side. Uh, what, we, what we might also do is um, select the, the model and add some isosurfaces, some temperature isosurfaces, and it might be interesting to do a 301 degree isosurface. There we go, so there's there's our hot zone. Uh, bear in mind this is very early on in the simulation, so it might be interesting to add a new surface. There we go. Or even and we can colour that by velocity. Alright, so that's just a quick introduction to doing a buoyant CFD simulation using the Blender BlendMe architectural modeling plugin uh, as a front end to OpenFoam. Thanks for listening.